And so why are epoxides so useful? Well, they're useful almost exclusively because they can be opened by nucleophiles. Okay, so obviously that's going to give an alcohol uh, and then whatever uh, nucleophile you had adjacent to that alcohol. So that, that turns out to be um, the, the most useful um, and almost the exclusive um, thing that is done with epoxides. So open with some sort of nucleophile and you will get to an alcohol and then next to that, whatever nucleophile you used. Okay, so this can occur under um, basically two different conditions. One is acidic and the other is basic. Um, and those tend to lead to different uh, selectivities. So in terms of the acidic um, opening, uh, we could talk about uh, acidic hydrolysis first. Okay, so this is just where we're gonna open the epoxide using water under acidic conditions. Okay, so here's, here's our epoxide and uh, it's gonna have that stereochemistry. Um, and if I treat this with some proton in water, Okay, what's going to happen is that epoxide, right? It's still an ether, and so these, uh, it's still a basic oxygen. So that can grab a proton. Okay, so we're going to get to our protonated epoxide, which will look like this. And now, just like we've seen before, this is now uh, prone to nucleophilic attack, um, and so water can now open. The epoxide, so we're going to cleave that strained carbon oxygen bond. Um, we'll get to uh, intermediate that looks like this. So there's there's our OH, and then the uh, water that just displaced is now going to be you know positively charged. Um, and then we're going to simply need to deprotonate to get to a neutral compound. Okay, and there we go okay so there's our our dial so the opening of, a, of an epoxide under acidic conditions um, proceeds and gives us this uh, trans dial situation um, now i would like to just point out briefly that um, here's a case where we're we're doing a uh, displacement of this oxonium um, in essentially uh, what amounts to an sn2 uh, type of mechanism uh, now we talked about in the in the case of alcohols that you really want to avoid um, protonating an alcohol and then using water to displace it in an SN2 fashion. Um, and that really comes down to a, um, an issue of kinetics, right? It's just you need an extremely strong acid to keep an uh, uh, alcohol protonated long enough uh, for um, the entropic requirements of backside attack to, to take effect and to get the right uh, geometry and energy to do that displacement. Um, in the case in the case of an epoxide, um, this is more plausible because of the extreme ring strain of the carbon oxygen bond, right? So um, it's it's basically uh, looking for any excuse to to do that displacement, um, and so that's why we can do it in the case of of epoxides. But in others like sort of ethers, and we did it with extremely strong acids with ethers, but um, in in general um, we would want to avoid that. So. We'll probably discuss this a bit more in lecture, um, but that's something to, to keep in mind um, is that epoxides are, are different. Um, they're, they're much more reactive because of ring strain. Okay, so this is basically a, an opening of the epoxide with acidic water, but we can also open epoxides with other types of acids as well. Okay, so for example, I could take that same epoxide. Okay, and I can treat it with one of the mineral acids. So um, HX, so uh, HCl, HBr, um, HI, and uh, by the same token, uh, basically the same mechanism. I'll protonate the epoxide, and then instead of water opening, I'll just open with whatever the halide was. Okay, so um, X can can basically be, really, it can be anything. It could be uh, bromine, chlorine, um, iodine, or, or even even fluoride. In this case, will work. Um, the epoxide is. Um, is strained enough to allow fluoride to, to open that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about the regio, uh, regio selectivity of acidic opening of epoxides. Okay. So if an epoxide is not symmetrical, there are two different positions that could open and give us uh, two different regioisomeric products. Okay. So regio um, chemistry. 
So uh, this gets to be a little bit complicated in some cases. Um, some, some cases are straightforward. So if we have an epoxide of this type, right? So we've got one of the carbons is secondary and the other is primary. If we do an acidic uh, opening of this type of epoxide, um, what we're basically going to see is a predominance of opening at the um, primary site. Okay, so this is gonna be the major product. Okay, so we, we opened at the primary site and then there will usually be some amount of the, the isomer where we opened at the secondary site, um, but this is usually gonna be the minor product, okay? Uh, and so what this probably looks like to you is that this uh, opening is occurring um, through an SN2 uh, type of mechanism where we're going for the least hindered site, okay? Now, things are a little bit different in the case where um, we have an epoxide where one of the sites is tertiary and the other is primary, right? If we do the same reaction here, um, what we will see is now in this case, um, a slight preference for opening at the tertiary site, okay? So this will be slightly major and then we're also going to see a significant amount of, of the other uh, opening, right? So oh, where we slightly, slightly minor, okay? Where we opened at the primary site, okay? So we're gonna see actually, you know, a lot of times a, a bad mixture of these two. Um, and so, you know, the, the slight uh, major formation of this sort of looks like SN1 uh, chemistry. Um, but the fact that you get a lot of this too calls that into question. And it turns out that the opening of epoxides is uh, something that mechanistically is somewhere between SN1 and SN2. And it doesn't necessarily fit in uh, nicely to either of those categories. Um, so uh, at the end of the day, acidic opening of epoxides um, can be a little complicated. Um, so we'll try to talk about that a little bit more in lectures, but unfortunately, there aren't necessarily fantastic rules um, for exactly what you're going to see. Uh, in the case in this top one, though, I think that uh, the getting this major uh, product is um, something that's that's reasonable, re reasonably reliable. Okay, so that's the acidic opening of epoxides, and then the final thing to talk about is uh, opening epoxide under basic conditions. Okay, so this is where we're going to use um, strong nucleophiles um, to open the epoxide. Okay, and this basically exclusively occurs um, occurs at the least hindered position. Okay, hindered, and so this is a lot more straightforward if we do the the um, basic opening of epoxides. Okay, so what kind of things can we do here? Well, we could take an epoxide. And we could treat this with, um, with hydroxide, for example. So let's say sodium hydroxide. Um, we'll probably have to heat this up. Um, but if we do that, um, we will basically, <laughs> pun intended, open the epoxide um, and we will get to our dial. Um, and all right, so this one you can't tell where the, the nucleophile added. But if we isotopically labeled one of these, um, we would see that um, this, this hydroxide was was right there okay uh, and so we can also use other types of nucleophiles so another one we could do um, is to open the epoxide with um, let's say instead of um, hydroxide if we used alkoxide so let's say it was um, sodium alkoxide again same same type of situation we're exclusively going to open at the least hindered position after we work that up with some um, proton, we will see that type of regioselectivity, right, with very, very high selectivity. Um, and then we can also do um, things like um, Grignard reagents, right? So if I uh, treat an epoxide with a Grignard uh, reagent, again, after the, the protonation uh, upon workup, I can form a new carbon-carbon bond. So I add in um, my Grignard into that epoxide and I get my, my secondary alcohol out of that. So that's a very useful um, uh, use of an epoxide. And then finally, if I have an epoxide and I treat that with um, a, uh, a nitrogen or an amine anion, 
So, okay, so I form a, uh, an amid anion. Again, that's simply going to react with the epoxide, open it up, and I can get to an amino alcohol right, where I've added now nitrogen right next to the epoxide. Right? So that's why epoxides are so useful because you can now attach different components, whether it's, a, it's an ether or a carbon-carbon bond or a carbon-nitrogen bond, um, you can open up the, the epoxide to make those linkages. And so if you think about overall, uh, going from an alkene to the epoxide and now to these uh, epoxide open products, that gives you a lot of versatility in terms of bringing things together. Okay? And so that is basically the long and short of epoxides and that pretty much uh, covers everything we want to talk about uh, in terms of ethers.